Okay, hi guys, welcome to another tutorial and overview. Going to be uh, throwing you some knowledge your way today. Um, and more specifically, we're going to be looking at a family of software from a company called CPU ID. Uh, they have a, s a couple of different um, utilities, we'll call them more than software packages, because you use them to monitor uh, more than you use them to actually accomplish a certain task. Uh, today we're going to be looking at um, CPU Z and we're going to go on to look at some other software packages and um, utilities rather, sorry, that they have as well. But today, like I said, we're going to be focusing on CPU Z. Basically what CPU Z does is it monitors your computer and all of its core components and it allows you to see things such as the CPU manufacturer and model number. It allows you to see the um, clock speed in real time. We'll come back to that in a second. It allows you to see your latency timings on your RAM, it lets you see your motherboard manufacturer, it lets you see uh, what firmware update you've got on your motherboard, it lets you see loads of interesting and useful information that you might need um, if you get into problems with your PC or if you want to upgrade something, uh, for RAM for example. Uh, it's very very handy and it's free and it's really easy to use so I thought why not share it with you guys. So let's get on to the, uh, actually let's go over clock speed quickly just um, before we download CPU ID. Clock speed is a measurement of speed of your CPU. Um, basically how fast it can carry operations uh, across the silicon. My CPU is a core Intel Core i5 uh, 2500K. Its stock frequency is 3.3 GHz. Uh, currently I've got it overclocked to 4.5 but that's uh, a whole other video entirely. Um, but yes, CPU Z, uh, Z sorry, not American, will let you uh, see your clock speed in real time and um, it can be quite useful for uh, certain other scenarios which I'll go over in a minute. First of all let's head over to the internet and download it. <clears throat> so we want to go to CPU ID in the search bar and as we can see here on Google www.cpuid.com we will take you to the correct URL click on there and here we go this is the CPU ID website uh, so we can see is we see our news feed here on the front, and then we've got uh, all their lists of other utilities and programs here as well. So let's click on the software button. So here are their utility packages. So you've got CPU Z, PC Wizard, uh, Perf Monitor, HW Monitor, HW Monitor Pro, and T Monitor. So today we're going to be concentrating on the purple CPU Z monitor. So we'll click on there. Again, it's going to go through its features, its benefits, and some screen grabs here as well. Um, but we're not interested in that currently. We're just going to download it. On the right hand side of the screen, you can see the 1.59 build uh, install package here, or you've got it zipped up if you want to do it that way. And we've also got the uh, ROG version, which is the Republic of Gamers. But uh, don't worry about that. You, if you know what ROG means, then um, download that one. If you don't know what it is, then you probably don't need it. So click on the uh, 1.59 setup, download it as usual to somewhere you on navigate to a file you know on your PC, save it there, install it onto your PC and we'll come back in a second and open her up and see what's what. Okay so here we go, We've got CPU Z installed onto my PC and I've just fired her up for the first time. So this is it. Little small dialog box. Uh, it looks very complicated if you uh, don't know what you're doing with computers. This is more of a piece of uh, software that would you, you use if you're more of an advanced PC user I would say or definitely if you're a video gamer on the PC you definitely want to be using CPU Z uh, it's almost a standard mainly because it's free and it's great so let's just quickly go over the CPU tab here as you can see along the top we've got lots of different uh, tabs so we'll, we'll go through those in a second but let's just concentrate on the CPU one for now so we can see here the processor information is in this top box it is a Intel Core i5-2500K it's a Sandy Bridge processor. Its uh, maximum wattage is 95. It's on a socket 1155 LGA. It's a 32 nanometer processor, and its core voltage is currently running at 0.992 volts. Here again is a specification. So it's an Intel Core i5 at 3.3 gigahertz, and then we've got some more information down here at the bottom. If we move down, we've got another dialog box uh, which reads clocks. This is where we see our live time clock speeds. So you can see at the moment, CPU is currently running between 16 and 45, uh, sorry, 1.6 and 4.5 gigahertz. Um, Windows 7 and the LGA socket, uh, sorry, the 1155 socket and the Intel processors of the current generation 
have as a sort of down clock. So when they're idling, they'll reduce their core clock down to, as you can see here, 1.6 gigahertz, which is about the same as a sort of low-powered laptop. Uh, and then when you need it, they can they go to their full clock, and in this case, which would be 4.5 gigahertz or 3.3 gigahertz if it wasn't overclocked. Uh, we can also see our bus speed here, which is 100 megahertz. And then over here, we've got our cache um, for the CPU, so the L1, L2, and L3. Um, what else? We've also got the cores and the threads here. So we've got four cores, a quad core processor, this one. So let's move over to a different tab. We've got the caches tab. Again, this is your uh, L1, 2, and 3 cache. Then you've got your main board. So this is your motherboard. Um, again, it gives you information as the manufacturer, the model number, its chipset, uh, and what revision it's on, and its current firmware uh, update. So here we can see it's on version P1 of the BIOS. So that's, that's if you want to flash the BIOS to a new version. Um, we've also got its graphic interface as well, so it tells you here it's got PCIe Express lanes, and the fastest one is running at 16 times bandwidth. Um, what else have we got? We've got memory. So again here, it's going to give you your type of memory, so DDR3 or DDR2, um, if you want an older system. It's a dual channel motherboard, so we need to have two lanes of your RAM slots uh, populated with DIMM sticks. It also gives you your total amount of RAM that you currently have on board the motherboard, but in this case is more or less 8 gigs. And it gives you all your frequencies and latency timings here. So it's currently, my RAM is, is running at stock frequency of uh, 99924 and it's uh, latency timings. We've also got uh, SDP, uh, sorry, SPD. Um, so your memory slot selection. So this, this is more information about your RAM. It tells you the make, uh, maximum bandwidth, part number, serial number, all those sort of cool things you want to know. And again, it's got our latency timings. Uh, graphics tells you which graphics card you've got installed, or it'll say you've got onboard graphics if you're running a um, without a graphics card on a H67 or Z68 motherboard. What else have we got here? We've also got the frequency of the uh, GPU as well, and its memory size. And then we've got a little bit more about CPU ID here. So that's pretty much everything we need to know. Again, this is more for the advanced PC user. If you're just running Word and looking at the internet, you really don't need this uh, utility. But you can download it if you want, just if you're interested. Uh, it's also handy if you, for example, if you've got a laptop which can accept a um, RAM upgrade. It's good because you can see what type of uh, RAM you've got, which is important because you'll need to get the same exact same RAM again if you want to build upon. So say you've got two gigs and you want to go to four and it's got two DIMM slots in there, like a, one populated and one free, you'll need exactly the same DIMM stick in the other RAM slot. Can't interchange RAM, it won't work. So uh, that's useful if you want to upgrade. Uh, it's useful so you can see which version of your motherboard BIOS you're running at the moment. So you can change that if you need to. Um, but yeah, like I said, it's more for the advanced PC user that's going to be interested in this stuff and um, need it. It's good when you're overclocking your PC, uh, your CPU sorry, because you can make sure that your overclock is actually working. So you can see it's jumping between 1.6 and 4.5 again. And yeah, that's just because I'm running Fraps recording this video. But normally it would just stay at 1.6. I've also got an Asus EPC laptop and that has a built-in overclocking feature. You hold the function key down and press a space bar, you can change between power saving and super performance mode. And if you use CPU Z, you can actually see it jump from about 1.2 gigs to 1.6, so you know that it's working. So it's just handy to monitor stuff, uh, and if you want to um, know which RAM you've got for upgrading and stuff, it's useful for that as well. It's free, it's very simple to understand once you know what you're looking for, and it lists pretty much all the information you could possibly want to know about it. So thanks for watching guys, hope you learned something again, and uh, next time we'll be looking at CPU ID HW monitor, which is also a, um, a monitoring software, a piece of monitoring software, sorry, which goes over some different features and uh, monitors some um, slightly different um, statistics from your PC. So again, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time guys.